Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live stream. Today, Jordan and I are drawing wild mushrooms. But first, if your studio habits need a kick in the butt, our prof has everything you need, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. OK, here we are doing some mushrooms, Jordan. What's going on here? All right. Um... We're going to be coloring some mushrooms. So I start off with my line drawing here. And uh, who knows what's going to be in the background. But uh, we're just going to go for it. We're just going to see what happens. And uh, hopefully we'll come out with something pretty by the end of the stream. I wonder if anybody in the comments knows what kind of mushroom that is. I didn't ask Clara what kind of mushroom this is. This is from the Flickr, our Art Prof resource Flickr page. Photo resource. Wow, I kind of butchered that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just saw mushrooms with colors. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Let's do that one. You know? I don't yeah, really yeah, same. Because wasn't this going to be focused on doing colors? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And, and you know what, to be honest with you, I think this one in particular made me think about Super Mario Brothers. Because Yes, I definitely thought the same thing. Yeah, it, I I am just now realizing that, um, like subconscious, <laughs> like I guess openly, maybe I knew it subconsciously, but uh, yeah. So we're doing mushrooms today. We and are doing I, mushrooms. I, I just realized how weird that sentence sounds out of context. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna be drawing and painting mushrooms. That that's how it is. <laughs> We we could be doing mushrooms and doing mushrooms. No. No comment. No comment. No comment. Okay. Because <laughs> because because we're, we're gonna say something and like three years down the line people aren't gonna let it go. So. Uh, yeah yeah someone will take it out of context they'll just edit yeah. edit yeah. a video of us. <laughs> yeah someone's gonna be like my child was watching this. And, you know, and we're just going to be like, it was just a joke, guys. And, you know, and then we're, yeah, yeah. we're going to get canceled. All that stuff. <laughs> well, okay. Um, for Oh, this is what I was going to say. I am using, for all of you that don't know, didn't see at the beginning of the screen, I'm using Tombow brush pens. And this is a first. Clara really uses these a lot. These are the water-based ones that also have the blender. So I'm excited to try them out. I also have these little liner ones too. Uh, these Fudenoske, Fudenoske ones. Um, so I'm excited to use that. And then it's on Strathmore marker paper. There's specifically a marker paper, which I've actually never used before. So I'm hoping transitioning into marker paper is going to be a good experience. Right now it feels super clean. Casba Life says, Lauren, what's your process with the markers? Well, right now I am just putting in blocks of color with a little bit of movement in the lines, I think. I actually kind of feel like what I'm doing here is similar to what I did in the cat drawing tutorial where that was on gesture drawing and using the markers you have both this line thing but also you have this color thing going on so I'm trying to suggest movement at the same time as blocking this in. And then there will be the added effect of trying to blend this afterwards. I also only have so many markers here. I've got a limited set and most of them, uh, uh, most of them are blues. So we'll see how that goes too, because I think both these mushrooms are, that I'm doing are warm colored. I don't even think I have a process for this. I'm just kind of, you guys, may or may not see this, but I'm incredibly sleepy right now. I've not gotten a lot of sleep the last couple of days. So I'm just like, oh yeah, art doing that thing. <laughs> it's like muscle memory taking over at this point. <laughs> that thing that we do called yeah. art. What have you been doing that's made you so sleepy? 
Um, I had to prepare a presentation last minute. Um, and I was up to like three in the morning doing it. Oh. It, it went well, but uh, it was definitely I was definitely up late. And then I was working on a drawing last night, and then um, I shared it with a friend, and they point out some perspective issues with the drawing. I was like, "Okay, I got to do it right now because <laughs> for some reason I can't put things down." And it was like one thirty yeah. when I got the feedback. And I was like, "I can't go to sleep." until I do that, which is probably really not good to get in the habit of doing. But um, I've three got hours. that same issue. Yeah, like I, I don't know what it's about me. It's like a perfectionism thing, I think, where once you know something is wrong, you can't just leave it because then it's going to bother you. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that's what it was. So <laughs> yeah, sometimes being a perfectionist sucks. <laughs> Yeah, it really Actually, does. Most of the time, it kind of sucks because it's just they're very <laughs> yeah, just brutal. It's being a perfectionist is only beneficial to the people that you're working for. Really, it's only beneficial to people that are not you because they're like, "Oh wow, you did a good job." Yeah, and then you're like, "Oh, I'm tired, and I don't have time for anything else in my life because I need to get this perfect." Great. Yeah, it's painful because I, I regret I lost something that's so basic sleep. I should be getting sleep. It shouldn't even I don't even think sleep should be a reward, <laughs> but it is, you know? Yeah, it is, what it is. It is. Wow, right now this looks like a cloud. I'm gonna put in some of the red ones too now underneath this one. Don't know how this is going, but it's gonna be something. I think that's how all, all art is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. This is especially weird because I don't have a opaque white marker, so I have to preserve my whites because I will not get them back. Oh, W315Bird says, when I look at the reference rather than movement, I see the direction of light and the colors of the shadows, but maybe that's kind of like movement in context of still light. Yeah, so... I guess what I meant by movement is movement of the marks to generate volume and shape. So yeah, what you're saying, since still life doesn't move, you have to basically make the painting or make the drawing active in some way. I do really feel like I'm speed drawing this morning. Same. <laughs> Same. I'm, I'm feeling the pressure, but it might just be my own brain playing tricks on me, too. Yours looks really good so far. It's like you have a finished mushroom already. I'm glad you think so, because I feel like there's so much more that needs to be done. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, look at the errors, you know? Um, like, it's like the perfectionism coming in, and maybe, yeah. it's, maybe it's worse because I am sleepy. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's kind of like how you need to stretch your muscles in the morning. You're just feeling a little, your brain's a little stiff. Yeah. It's okay. I will get through it. They Bjorn, said my first rodeo. Bjorn says, is the fear of painting coming from being a perfectionist? Uh, I think that's part of it, definitely. I, I've gotten so used to uh certain aspects of art like just drawing or or drawing the figure and stuff like that that i have very high expectations of myself for other areas when i know i haven't put as as much time into it and just going through that loop and that cycle again can often be very frustrating um especially you know if uh if you're getting the same feedback or you're seeing the same results and you're like what is wrong and you just don't understand uh that can be very difficult Yeah, I feel like the um, fear of painting never really leaves an old fear, fear of a blank canvas. Mm. And you want every painting to be good and, and perfect, I guess. So yes, maybe there is some perfectionism in there. Everybody makes bad work. Everybody makes a lot of bad work, but you still don't expect that. 
don't mm-hmm. expect that of myself. You're right. Right. Or I'm it's not a- allowed to make bad work. Sorry. No, yeah, you're totally right. I agree. I agree. I think also when it's like a career that also changes things too. Um, like it puts even more pressure on you. But, um, yeah, definitely. Casper Life says, I can't wait to see how you blend. I have not mastered the blending pin yet. Oh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm going to be using it very superficially because I don't really blend my colors in real life. Actually, that's a lie. A lot of my paintings have become a lot more blendy in the past year or so. But um, yeah, you and I will be working on it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, together. That's right. Together. Birthday twin powers activate. Yes. Together we make one good artist. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for two good artists. <laughs> okay, that's fine. How about how about one and a half? You're already a good artist. I'm half a good artist. I don't know about that. You're a great artist. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Me Me Lou Art says, "Love how Lauren's mushroom kind of looks like a burning tree at the moment." Yeah, it's the burning bush mushroom. Can you guys see the other reference photo? I know I don't have my reference photos up. But the other one I'm using does kind of, maybe I can show it on my phone, actually. It looks like this. So it kind of has a tree-like look. That's I'm very really excited about it. Yeah. I was I thinking know. of this. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you finish. You finish. I was thinking of having this tree mushroom that is surrounded by little tiny red mushrooms. That was my idea. My spur of the moment idea. I was going to say that I don't know if I'll get to my second one, my second drawing. It just looks like a bunch of bread roll- rolls to me that I found in the dirt. <laughs> but just to show you guys real quick to see what I may not be doing. Didn't that look like bread rolls to you guys? Like, I'm not. Oh I'm my not God, right? <laughs> 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 those, those totally don't look like mushrooms with those colors. But, uh, yeah. Like egg brushed bread rolls where they get that really shiny surface. Yeah, like it just looks way too perfect. And, you know, just look like you want to take them out, put some butter on it, and, you know, just do that. <laughs> Maybe I'll put in your bread roll once Ooh. into my drawing. I think that could happen. By all means, go for it. I was looking at this painting, actually. Those bread roll mushrooms do remind me of this painting I was looking at for class. It's by Bruegel, and the painting's called The Land of Cocaine, which is basically like this land of, of lazy people where food just grows on trees and pigs already have a fork stuck in them and whatever. It's very bizarre. But in this painting, there is a bread cactus that looked very much like that the bread mushrooms. Oh, uh, Maria says, I'm finding it cool that one drawing is line and the other is more masses of colors. Yeah, I think Jordan, yours is the mass of colors in this case. But you started out with lines. Yeah, I had lines set um, before the stream started. So yeah, I had this, but it really, probably didn't even really need the line to be honest with you it's just <laughs> it's just a habit at this point i like getting my proportions down um, yeah you're really, really good at that i'll figure drawing practice that's what that is <laughs> <laughs> oh wow this blue is not even a color it you can't see it on here man okay. i'll be honest i haven't used procreate in so long i forgot the brushes that I use. <laughs> I feel like you're always a Procreate person, are you not? I do, but I've been using my Cintiq more lately. Oh, Cintiq pulling you over. Well, I've had both the whole time. <laughs> it's oh. just this one's new and fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Maya Hika says, oh, the name of the mushroom that Jordan is drawing right now is called Fly Agaric. Fly Agaric? 
very I'm going to call it the Mario mushroom, though. It's the Mario <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> the Mario mushroom. Did I wish you... I had a brown. Can I? Ooh, I've got a brown in this one. It's just a pen. Ooh, and I have a gray. I just really want to make... Ooh, that orange is very intense. Yeah, like... I don't know, looking at this mushroom, it makes you just want to think of the Mario theme song. Dun, 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 oh, dun. no. <laughs> I'm going to have that stuck in my head. <laughs> I, you know, I'm known for doing that to people, getting songs stuck in people's heads. And it was crazy. I can do it, like, multiple times in a row. It's really funny to me. <laughs> like, it's not just one song. I'll switch to another song, like, five seconds later, and there'll be another one. Like, oh, you got that stuck in my head. <laughs> I just have a really good taste in catchy music. I don't know. You're an earworm, Jordan. That's what you are. Is that what that is? That's yeah. Of, I like that. <laughs> How about oh. <laughs> ba Baparistic says, can you demonstrate or explain how to tackle masses of mushrooms together? For example, oyster mushrooms or enoki mushrooms. Um, oh, I treat those as a pattern, I think. Like come up with a module, draw the larger shape like the larger mass of the mushroom and then fill it in as a pattern almost. But what would you call it? Like a non-repeating pattern where it's an imperfect one. It's not, it's not like something you'd see on a textile. Basically you turn the mushroom into a mark. Don't give each one super defining features or it's going to suck and everything will feel as if you can't focus on anything. Yeah, I agree. I, I would just turn them into shapes. Um, when I was drawing, wait, where'd the lines go? So I don't know if I'm going to get to this one, but um, that's kind of how I approach this. I just looked at them as shapes, not really as mushrooms. So when you think of it that way, then it's usually a lot easier to, to see the basic foundation of all the um, things that you're working with. Yes. I'm going to use some purple on this. It's going to get super rainbow soon. All right, now the Mario song is stuck in my head. <laughs> I got to combat that somehow. I'll try not to hum like the music I'm thinking of to you guys, but <laughs> I'm a, I don't know anything about how to play music or how to read music, but I'm a very musical person. Like I always have my headphones in and it's very rare that i don't have some song that i've played on repeat like 45 times in any given period <laughs> this is really inopportune that i don't have a desaturated color or that's in one of these larger shapes. I guess I, that's what the blending tool is for. Maybe I should actually try that. Jordan, how are you tackling the dirt? I find stuff like that much harder than mushroom, which has defined edges. Um, yeah, good question. I'll get back to you on that once I get there. Uh, I'm probably just going to have a bunch of texture brushes, most likely. Um, I'm focusing more on the mushroom now simply because... Um, it's the focal point, but you know, as I'm going through my brushes, I'm seeing really good options for the dirt. Maybe I will should just do that now. Ooh. <laughs> like, like, yes. Let's see how this goes. Ooh, oh. I love this blending tool. Sorry, I'm interrupting you, but this is okay. new. That's cool. It does kind of make the paper get a little fuzzy. Oh, <laughs> neat. You know, you, go. you know, you just reminded me of, I don't know if you ever watched Ross Draws, but <laughs> he does this thing whenever he does like color dodge where he just starts going like, ooh, <laughs> like it's super <laughs> excited. It, it just reminds me. That is how I feel right now. This is really cool, Jordan. What makes it so cool? because I'm getting new colors just by blending the colors. 
It, I'm getting pastels and things. I'm getting gradients. Mm. Clearly, I don't use a lot of blending things in my life. I am one of those people that keeps their, their peas and carrots separate, maybe. As far as painting goes, not in, not in food life. But this is, wow, Woo! I don't even know if you can see that. It doesn't show up very well on the screen here, but it just totally made this mushroom get a lot more shape to it. You know, as I long as you're enjoying yourself, I'm all with it. I am very much enjoying myself right now. This is really cool. Oh, why have I not used water-based markers ever? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I love it. Okay, now I'll do some background. I know I need to do some. I guess the background is going to be what? Like, I'm going to put in some like purple and blues, maybe. Oh, wait, it's in a kind of dense forest thing. This is hard. Okay, let me try this. The uh, W through and five bird says the Tombow blender is pretty cool. You can also use it on soluble pencils, Crayola markers, gel pens, anything water-based. I will keep that in mind. I am definitely surprised and pleased. Even though I've seen Clara use it a whole bunch of times, I just thought that was... I don't know, maybe how hard Clara presses on the paper or something but it's something I can do too now, kind of, not as good. <laughs> this is incredible. Okay, I don't know how it's gonna, oh no, I, I forgot to make the stems for my mushrooms. So now they're just gonna sit like little puff balls. Okay, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. As per usual, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I'm just putting stuff down. Just just putting it down. It's happening. Yeah, that. I love the twirliness of yours, Jordan, the, of the stem. The twirliness? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sunflower, cherry flower says, question, can you draw any vegetable and marker? Yeah, you can draw any vegetable you want. I used to love drawing artichokes with markers. I used to love drawing on artichokes with markers. That was cool. Draw. I think we have- Huh, sounds like an interesting activity. Well, I think we even have a art prof video where Deep D draws on, what is it? A, an eggplant. For an animation. It was really cool. Okay, I'm getting too tight here. That was too tight. That was way too tight. I'm sure there's a picture which that'll make this easier, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually gonna Okay, there we go. And I get in some strokes that are larger. I'm gonna fill the space up. This is gonna be like a, what would you call it? Um, a, a Turner, a, a Turner painting of a storm. I'm gonna make some movement here. Wilmy Van Roosh says, is the blender just water or another liquid? I believe it's just water. Makes it way cool. Okay, I'm gonna try using some pink, some purple on this and see if it will do anything. Uh, not enough. What is the opposite of blue? Oh, is it orange? Yes, okay. Sorry, I'm talking to myself a lot today. No, it's okay. Yeah, I think it's good to even ask <laughs> your question to yourself to know that sometimes we just, we, we make those mental blunders too. Yeah, I just had a brain fart there. You know, my favorite moments like that are when you forget how to spell a very simple word. 
Oh yeah, that happens to me all the time. Like you forget how to spell the word cow or something. It's just like <laughs> you know, the word cow. Like that's that sense, you know. Like that's happened to me before. <laughs> like I should know this. Right. Nolan Sarah says, Lauren, when you said too tight, that was too tight, what does that mean? What makes one stroke more tighter than the other? Oh, it's I can kind of oh, this is actually thing I can actually feel when it's too tight now because I've been having hand problems that make it painful to draw. So I can feel I can actually feel it now when it is too tight, but generally it's also like a mindset to your where I become aware that I am <laughs> that I am obsessing over a mark. I don't know. What's it like for you, Jordan? Um I don't, I, I don't know. I guess everything just feels incredibly stiff. Like I can't put, um, I can't put a s smooth line down. Everything is um, very rigid and sharp. Um, I'm not able to move around as much. Like my arm feels like it can only be in one location at a time. Um, yeah. I've actually never felt, you know, I don't think I've ever defined that. Um, you know you just know when it happens though yeah it's sort of like how a musician kind of goes like oh i was off and to someone who is a novice or they don't know this stuff they're like sounded fine to me but to them it's like no that was flat that was off that was this that was yeah um so i guess we just get caught up in the artist lingo don't even realize um sometimes yeah i agree with that it's it's I, I don't know if it's intuitive. I do think there's a physical aspect to it that anybody can feel, but it is. It is something. I don't know. I lost my train of thought. I got very wrapped up in this. <laughs> it's okay. Look at this, I can make browns, Jordan. I can make browns out of this. Ooh, look at you oh. go. Thanks, Jordan, thanks. I'm gonna add some blue on these other mushrooms. Beth Saurus says, just join and thought I'd mention this. I found that drawing mushrooms with a black brush pen is really fun. Ooh. I don't know if I even had, they didn't give me a black in this set, but I will keep that in mind. Tombow's got a bunch of different sets. They're all really cool. I think I chose two and out of the two, I ended up with this one, which I am loving. It is called the, as a set name, hang on. The Perfect Blends palette, maybe that's it. The Perfect Blends palette. That it sounds, is the perfect. <laughs> sounds too it good is, to be true. <laughs> yeah, too good to be true. It is pretty cool. I don't actually, I didn't, I'm not used to blending. That's the thing though. I need a background color. Would you be able to visually show tight versus not tight? You or another artist's. Yeah, I think you can also see another artist's work. I don't know if I can describe an artist off of the top of my head that that has a tight painting, but I've definitely seen, especially in crit, I can see a piece of work and I can say, oh, that looks really tight to me. And I've had that also said to me about my work which is fine and often true. I, th I think the key is thinking about rhythm, which is one of those things that is hard to explain in music and in drawing, um, but there's just a natural flow to it. Like I was reading um, How to Draw the Head and Hands by Andrew Loomis, and he was talking about that, and he said it's a very difficult concept to explain because it's more felt than expressed, or, or into words at least. Um, yeah. Oh, like I, yeah, I don't. I really don't know if I could find something that's similar. Um, if I can, I'll come back to it. But yeah, I 
Jordan, what texture brush did you use for the first and can you explain how you applied it? I find the texture brushes hard to use because they feel so big. I agree with that actually. I don't know how I use the texture uh, brushes. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know which texture brush I used because I flipped through so many of them. But um, when I use texture brushes, I, I'm really just kind of experimenting and seeing what works. Uh, there are times where um, the name of something is like metal scrape but it works really good for tree bark or something. And it's like, it's not the, you know, it's not what it's used, what's meant to be used for or something, but it just fits with everything. And because I'm kind of just playing around, um, I, I, you know, you'll hear a lot of artists say brushes don't matter. And I think what they mean is that you can achieve just about any look with any brush you want. And, you know, the brush pack isn't really all that it's about. It's more about the artist behind it. Um, and, some people can do really amazing things with fewer brushes and some people need a trillion. Um, it just depends on the situation. Ooh, that's red. I don't want that. Uh, let's try this. It's also extremely dark. I don't want that either. Oh. Okay, there we go. Oh, now I'm just going to have to blend that together. I made a mess. <laughs> it's messy in here. Okay. Not a big deal. You said you made a mess just like in your artwork or like on the actual like surface you're painting on. I, I wasn't looking. <laughs> Oh, the, the artwork, I just put down, this is the thing with markers is you can't go back once you put a mark down. So I put down a color that was really not right. And now it's very muddy in this one section, but, uh, yeah. you know, I can live, I'll live with it. Dun, 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 dun. Anna Wider says, Lauren, I've noticed your work has gotten a lot looser recently, and I like it so much better because of that. But that has a lot to do with my aesthetic. Oh, thanks, Anna. I, I had a class with a professor that was really pushing me to drop, drop some of the the maximalism, I guess, and the attention to wanting a very specific look of something. I guess I don't I don't know how to articulate that really, but I tried to really pare down and work really directly and within one or a couple se sessions. And I think that that's been helpful for developing that looseness. But there's always this insecurity in trying something new. So thanks for thanks for your uh, encouragement <laughs> okay i'm going to try using the blending pen again i think in a second i think it's been more interesting trying to figure out how to make brown with these markers than it is using the actual brown pen that I have. So that is a that is a new discovery with these already. Slepnir123 says, so if a loose art is lacking details, does that mean tight art has too much detail? I don't think that loose art is lacking details necessarily, but it, I think it does have to do with where you're trying to put them or how you're trying to, that's not even it. Because you can have a tight gesture drawing and that's no detail at all. It's a thing that has to do with, with control and with how you're, you are handling the tool that you're using. And sometimes it feels, uh, another word for tight I think is, is forced. And this is not just a, this is not just a, art thing. I swim and I can feel when I'm forcing it when I'm not in a groove versus when I my stroke is good and I'm kind of sailing through the water. And I think musicians have that as well as Jordan, you were saying. And 
it's it's just figuring out that maximum efficiency for what it is that you're doing where you enter a kind of zone and things are are flowing and your decisions are flowing mm -hmm. so an example of an artist who i think could get detail and still be loose is probably monet um you know or 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 any like pointillism painter or something like that the impressionist i think they're able to get a lot of stuff done it feels loose it feels you know very organic but at the same time they could still do a lot with it so yeah like lauren said i think it i think it comes with uh speed professionalism knowing your materials and what you're doing um and yeah and almost not caring in a way there, there's like a level yeah. of <laughs> that Definitely. It's part of it, which is so tough because obviously we want to care about your work, but there are times where you just kind of have to let go and just let things happen. You know, you just have to kind of feel it. There's, yeah. which is, uh, you, it's it's hard to explain what that feeling is that you should feel, but it's the feeling of the artwork rather than overthinking it while you're working. Or, oh man, it's like when Simone Biles got like stuck in the air or lost in the air during that one uh, vault, if any of you watched the Olympics. And that I guess is almost also, or I imagine when I saw that, I thought, oh, wow, I have definitely felt that in my work sometimes where I've forgotten what, a, what it is that I'm even doing. I've thought about it so much that I forgot how to do it. And so unexplainable mindset, but also available in like so many different practices. Wow, I love this. I love these markers. Our prof is asking, Jordan, why are you constantly rotating your image? Um, it would be the equivalent of me like turning my piece of paper or clipboard um, instead of turning my actual iPad. But I do that because um, it's easier for me to get a certain stroke down sometimes. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's turning a weird way because I'm, I'm left handed. So maybe it turns in a way that doesn't agree with the way my hand naturally curls or something. So I'll just do that and make it easier for myself. So, yeah. We've talked already about how we're both left-handed, right? Did we talk about that? I don't remember. I feel like I knew this, but then I'm always surprised when you say it. <laughs> so, oh, wow, we really are twins. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, I, I think I forgot you were left-handed or didn't know. But either way, I'm going to treat it like it's brand new information. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> As was foretold says, when you feel you're starting to force the art, do you find it better to focus on loosening up and pushing through or taking a break and walking away for a while? Jordan, do you have tips? Um, sometimes I can't walk away from it. I mean, that's obviously <laughs> always like a good choice to just walk away from it. But sometimes when you can't, what I'll try and do is I'll switch up the way I'm actually drawing or um, I will put on something that makes me relax. So, and oftentimes that's music. So I'll put on, everyone who knows me well knows I love the Michael Jackson, and Stevie Wonder and stuff. So I'll put on something like that and I'll just groove out to that, I'll just jam out and uh, I'll feel looser automatically. And that I think kind of comes through. For me, it depends on where I am in my studio day. So if I've just started, the tightness is probably because I haven't gotten into the zone yet. And I don't want to stop because if I don't stop, or if I do stop, I'll put off the time of actually being in studio, which is counterproductive. But if I've been at it for a few hours and I'm getting angsty over it, I'll, I'll take a break, I'll take a walk, uh, or work on a different project. I usually keep a list of three or four different things that I need to do while I'm in the studio that are, that are not all say, work on, work on the details of this painting, or so I'll have say, oh, need a gesso, 
need to put down a base layer for this painting, need to do some sketchbook work. So those are three really, three different steps of the art process. And if I'm stuck in one, I can go to another part. Nice. Maria Kilson says, Bee Gees and ABBA are both loose drawing soundtracks. Yep, I was, uh, oh man, what was I listening to? Um, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. That I was listening to that the other day. I actually had to go somewhere and I stayed where I was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to miss the song. <laughs> but um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us on the stream. Right after this, we're gonna be doing a stage session in the post live stream stage. So, uh, come in and ask us your questions and talk to us and all that cool stuff. And also got to say thank you to all of our top Patreon supporters. You guys are always what keep Art Prof going and we really, really appreciate it. And we love you guys. So take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. See you in the state session. Peace. Bye.